recording. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Let us open our heart to his grace. Give us, O oh Lord, graciously your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Incline our will toward yours. Draw us closer to you, to your love. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, uh, everybody. Good evening to you. Uh, Francesca, Mathieu, and Blessing, and also good evening to all our uh, view viewers. Uh, this time, I think we are reaching the end, God willing, the end of uh, book one of um, Ascent of Mount Carmel. Finally, um, I think we are there. And uh, therefore, I'll be finishing the last uh, two chapters. They are very short. Uh, one of them we already have explored. I will come back to it uh, in um, to do it in itself. Uh, and hopefully also get a general view of the entire uh, book and also uh, more importantly, uh, opening the uh, next stage of our uh, reading and studying uh, to see in which direction uh, we will be going, because I just remind you that uh, we have uh, two options. Uh, one is a book two of the Ascent of Mount Carmel, which looks like the obvious um, continuation. And we have also the other option, which is also it, it which it has also its own uh, logic and coherence, which is just moving to the parallel of uh, book one of Ascent of Mount Carmel, which is book one of uh, The Dark Knight. We will see that, we will discuss it, I will explain uh, the choice we will be making, but of course, uh, I mean, uh, no choice is perfect, uh, and each person has uh, its own uh, views. Now, so let us resume from where we left it. This is lesson uh, 22. In lesson 21, we addressed, we continued to address the second part of the famous uh, chapter 13. And um, I'm glad we went through uh, chapter 13. Uh, in different ways and angles, uh, even during the questions and answers, we sort of uh, thought very much also of a possible parallel uh, with uh, Lexio Divina, which is simply watching Christ in the Gospels, listening to him, listening in our heart, in our heart, and trying to understand what he wants from us and just um, do it, which is exactly the advice that uh, St. John of the Cross is uh, giving us in uh, chapter 13, uh, book one, chapter 13, uh, paragraph uh, three. So now we will move on, if you don't mind, to chapter uh, 14 and 15. Uh, I will read them with you. And we have already seen together chapter 14, but this time I want to do it just uh, for itself. <clears throat> so if you don't mind, I am sharing right now the, um, the uh, screen. 
trying to just fix, yeah, to just enlarge the picture, the video. Now, as you can see here, we have chapter, uh, we need to start chapter 14, which is right after what we have just seen uh, the other day, uh, the end, the bottom uh, verses that we find in uh, the bottom of um, the drawing of the ascent of Mount Carmel. Okay, so now chapter uh, 14, wherein is expounded the second line of the stanza. So remember that the uh, ascent of Mount Carmel in itself is um, um, uh, it has a poem in the beginning of it. Sorry, it's not set here in a form of a poem, but just allow that. So as you see, this is the <clears throat> poem in itself. On a dark night, kindled in love with yearnings. Oh, happy chance, blessed, um, blessed uh, luck, if you prefer. I went forth without being observed, my house being now at rest, in darkness and secure by the secret ladder, disguised, oh, happy chance, in darkness and in concealment, my house being now at rest. As you know, <coughs> uh, St. John of the Cross was just commenting on the first part of the first stanza, which is on a dark night. He didn't go even further than that. So we spent 13 chapters just working on a dark night. What is it? Why it is necessary and how to come out of it. So how to come out of it, chapter 13 and all the chapters that precede it are, if you want um, uh, ex an explanation of why it is necessary. Now he will move on to the second verse of the stanza, kindled in love with yearnings, okay? Uh, don't be too, um, I mean, too uh, uptight, if you want, uh, in the sense of trying to question why is he doing this? Why is he not commenting everything? In fact, he will not comment more than that. Uh, he, he essentially comments on, on a dark night. Uh, just very sh two, sh two short chap chapters in the end commenting uh, kindled in love in, with the earnings, but he doesn't even uh, develop it more than that, and he stops. So try not to ask him to continue the rest because that's not the purpose. He just leans on a poem. He never commented it in, in fullness, in full. That's, that didn't, never happened. He commented other poems, which you can find in Spiritual Canticle, for instance, 40, 40 stanza, 40. 40 stanzas, you can read, comment. And even when he comments, he says, I cannot say all what is included in, in the poem. So remember that we have two forms here of expression, the poem, the poetic form, which is more, um, it contains in itself a lot, a lot, which is a little bit unique in the history of uh, mysticism, uh, Christian Catholic uh, mysticism. It's, it's rather, um, it's, it's not common. Uh, it's not very common to have uh, just one poem and then working on the poem. And the quality of his poems are extremely, almost almost unique in Christianity, uh, in the sense that they are extremely um, um, rich, carrying a lot uh, inside uh, of, of them. So uh, just uh, remember, we are in front of a unique, um, unique kind of uh, poetry. It's not just literature, it's a very unique uh, poetry, even though in Spain, uh, they would teach uh, when you study uh, Spanish literature um, in the university, you will have John of the Cross, uh, of course, but here we are not in a, a studying literature, we are just studying uh, one of the greatest mystics, if, if not, that's my opinion, personal opinion, if not the uh, greatest uh, mystic, and until uh, we'll get a, another one, maybe, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Uh, 
for now. I mean, God is free to do whatever he wants. Uh, so so he, here, here it is. So you ha he's leaning here on the poem very lightly. In fact, he's just leaning on the reality of a dark night. He has the poem in the back of his mind constantly, of course, but that's not the, the point in what he's doing, okay? So please remember that, um, th th that point. So now, in the, once he finishes what he wanted to do, which is to explain why it's a dark night, why we have to get rid of all our um, um, sensual uh, desires, how we can do it, chapter 13. Now he seems to move on to the second part of the first stanza, okay? So the second line of the stanza, kindled in love with yearnings. So, of course, the, the, the text itself uh, is uh, a text, um, the, the text of the poem is a text of, of, of a victory. Mm? Uh, remember, all oh, lucky blessing, all oh, lucky chance, uh, or oh, oh, sorry, all oh, blessed luck. Uh, uh, it means I'm already free. Mm? And he will apply this poem in two levels. He will apply it for the house of the saints and he will apply it to the house of the, 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 the spirit or, or the mind, the upper, the rational part of, of the human being. You see, he applies it on the two levels. In book one, he will apply it for the, for the dark night of the saints and later he will develop the same, um, the same poem on a, a different, um, for, for a, on, on the different night, the other night, okay, the deeper night. This also, we need to, to, to remember it. I was saying that this poem is, um, is singing already a victory, is singing already, um, talking about a liberation. The liberation from the, in our case here, it will be of the house of the sense. And then if we read it again and interpret it, in, in, in a, for the house of the, the, the spirit, it will be, of course, applied over about a liberation. So this is why sometimes we feel when he writes that the two nights are very close in, here, my, in his mind. And even myself, when I comment, sometimes I could make a mistake of just talking about being totally freed, while in fact, it's not about being totally freed, it's just being freed from the slavery of the house of the saints. So bear in mind that initially, it, as he says it, it is written for the liberation of all the liberation because uh, the human being now is with the beloved. So reach perfection of love, reach union of love with Christ. But here it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a big step before that, which is we still have we still need the liberation of the, um, the, the the spirit before reaching there. Now, so I'm back to chapter 14. Now that we have expounded the first line of this stanza, which is in a dark night, which treats of the night of sense, it could treat also of the night of uh, the, the spirit, um, if we were reading it on a deeper level, explaining that this night of sense is, uh, sorry, explaining what this night of sense is, remember, the, uh, as I said, the 12 first chapters, and why is it called night? And now uh, that we have likewise described the order and manner which are to be followed for a soul to enter therein actively, Remember, chapter 13, this means uh, uh, chapter 13, okay? So let me put it here. The next thing to be treated in due sequence is its properties and effects, properties and effects. And in fact, he won't do it. He will not do it. He, he's just saying what is supposed to be done, but he won't do it. He will stop there which are wonderful and are described in the next lines of the stanza aforementioned, upon which I will briefly, briefly, you will hardly do anything, touch 
for the sake of expounding the said, said lines as I promised in the prologue. And I will then pass on at once to the second book. So he himself here gives us the order of uh, his writing. So he finishes Ascent 1. Now he will move to addressing what could be done in order to come out of the night of, or go through, if you prefer, the night of the spirit. Remember, you have two houses, the lower house and the upper house. The sense, not the senses, but the sense. There's a big difference. The sense and the spirit. So he works with one, what is supposed to be done in order to come out of the first one, and then what is supposed to be, come, uh, to, to be done in order to come out of the uh, second one, which is ascent two and three. So one is, ascent one is for the, the house of the sense, what could be done, which he calls actively. So what I, I can do, what is with the grace of God, but the grace of this grace of God is the common one is given, given to everybody. So I need to use it. So it depends on me with this common general grace, if you, if you want. And therefore God will reply. We will see that uh, later. So he explains here the order of, of things. So ascent one is the house of sense and ascent two and three, two and three. So it's not book one and then we don't have three levels. We have two levels, book one and book two and three, because book two will talk about uh, the uh, act of faith. Book uh, three will talk about the act of hope and act of love, okay? And these acts, theological acts um, in fact uh, show us what could be done from our side in order to allow God to purify uh, our faith and hope and, and love okay uh, which means the mind the memory and the will in the structure of Saint John of the Cross faith goes with the mind hope goes with the uh, um, hope goes with memory, and then love goes with the will. So, and I will then pass on at once to the second book, Ascent 2 and 3, treating of the other part of this night, which is the spiritual. The soul then says that, kindled in love with yearnings, it passed through this dark night of sense, and came out thence to the union of the beloved. To the union hasn't reached it yet so be careful here the interpretation of this sentence this is why i said sometimes he talks about the two the two as if they were one so we finish here one night one purification instead of night you can write purification of the sense but then we <laughs> we haven't reached yet the union with god then there is another step in order to reach it so be careful here and when you read this sentence for in order to conquer to, 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 to win, to vanquish, no? Uh, all the desires and to deny itself the pleasures which it has in everything and for which its love and affection are wont to enkindle the will that it may enjoy them, it would need to experience the soul, another and greater enkindling by another and better love which is that of its spouse. I will explain, I will stop here and explain because I gave previously an explanation. Now I need to give more detail about this explanation. To the end that having its pleasure set upon him and deriving from him its strength, it should have courage and constancy to deny itself all other things with ease. Okay, so uh, let me read this same sentence uh, here in the other translation as we did the other day. Uh, so the first translation, the, the text we are reading is the translation of uh, Alison Pierce, and this uh, translation is of Otilio Kavanagh, uh, which is the one you have, the majority of people have, which is this um, edition. No. This edition. The one we are about to read is this edition, okay? This translation, sorry. The soul then states that fired with love's urgent longings, 
it passed through this night of sense to to union with beloved with the beloved same here same problem uh, that's the original we can't change it a love of pleasure and attachment to it usually fires the will toward the enjoyment of things that gives pleasure a more intense enkindling of, of, of another better love love of the soul's bridegroom is necessary for the vanquishing of the appetites and the denial of this pleasure by finding satisfaction and strength in this love it will have the courage and constancy to read, readily deny all other appetites the love of its bridegroom is not only requisite for conquering the strength of the sensitive appetites and enkindling with urgent longings of love is also an enkindling with urgent longings of love is also necessary for the sensory appetites are moved and attracted towards sensory objects with such cravings that if the spiritual part of the soul is not fired with other more urgent longings for spiritual things the soul will be able neither to overcome the yoke of nature nor to enter the night of sense nor will it have the courage to live in the darkness of all things by denying its appetites for them in fact i continue to read till the end this is the translation of alison pierce so it's exactly the same um, the same part see the second part here uh, of what i just read okay now let us see what he means by uh, this uh, other love and as we can see here you see um, if if the soul doesn't have a stronger love and a higher love it won't be able to uh, be freed from uh, what is um, this initial slavery that is happening in the uh, house of the saints so if you don't mind i will just come back to the uh, our drawing one of our drawings and we'll just talk about it okay so So normally now you should be able to see uh, the a drawing I made uh, some time ago. Okay. Now <clears throat> we have two the two houses here. One is the the upper one, which contains the faculties, the mind, the memory, and the will. And we have the house of the sense, which contains, of course, the five senses, but also many other, uh, the, the passions, for instance, the passions that he mentioned, uh, the passions of the soul, hmm? what attracts the soul toward an object or what sort of dissuades or uh, the, where the soul finds it more um, a difficult, arduous, to 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 conquer or, or to find so all the work he's doing i hope you can see my mouse here all the work he's doing in um, uh, book one is to um, show us that it is important for the soul to come out of this area as if the soul was dwelling here in the beginning so i would almost <clears throat> if you don't mind just to, to to have another uh, drawing give me just a second yeah so i will draw again the same drawing just here so this is the upper part. Um, all the, all this is the upper part. All this is the upper part of the soul. According to the use of St. John of the Cross, this will be called the, the spirit in the human being. Of course, specifically, 
the spirit is just this part when I draw it, usually in the School of Mary, but um, what he means by the spirit uh, sometimes could include all the upper part. So we need to be careful um, the, about the words we use and how they apply when and how. Now, he seems to say initially that the human being, the soul, is dwelling, is literally dwelling in, in this area here. And the soul is under the influence of the uh, different um, the passions, the senses, the five senses, and the two types of, of passion, irascible and concupiscence, concupiscence, no? concupiscence, sorry. So the soul is slave in this area. How then will the soul move on? So let us go step by step. First and foremost, as I said, as he says, not me, he says, that the Lord leads the human being according to the way of the human being, the initial way of the human being. So in our case here, the Lord will lower himself in order to talk the language of the human being. So you will have devotions, you will have feelings, uh, etc. And there is a beautiful paragraph that describes it. So if you don't mind, let me allow me allow me this. I'll come back to this because I can't show you two things at the same time. So I would like to show you uh, another text of Saint John of the Cross where he describes the. Um, the first stages of growth in the human being after conversion, what happens, uh, etc. Et okay, so just give me a second, I will show you this beautiful text. Bear with me, bear with me. So I will tell you after from where I'm taking this text. It's uh, St. John of the Cross, obviously, but it's another book. It must, it must be known then that the soul after it has been definitely converted to the service of God, which is second conversion, discover, discovering Christ, discovering the a possibility of having a personal relationship with the Lord, etc is as a rule when you say as a rule it doesn't take don't take it as a rule like like it has to be like that but usually instead of as a rule say usually spiritually is spiritually nurtured nurtured and caressed by god you see how god the soul still essentially dwells or is enslaved in the lower part as i just drew it a few seconds ago sorry have have this drawing in your mind so the Lord lowers himself, the green arrow I just made a few seconds ago. And nurtures, because he has to go step by step. So nurtures the human being at this level, feeds the human being. Even as is the tender child, the same way as the tender child by its loving mother who warms it with the heat of her bosom and nurtures it with the sweet milk and soft and pleasant food. This is John of the Cross writing. So he acknowledges the fact that God doesn't talk the perfect language immediately. God will proceed step by step. And since the person is sensual, if you want, is normal, quote unquote, but this means because of the uh, original sin, because of the consequences, even if we are baptized, we fall back to that house of sense, the slavery to the house of sense. Okay, so God, in order to, to, to lead us toward perfection, toward union with God, 
toward the, the, this fullness of life with him, he talks our language. So he lowers himself to our level. And you look how St. John of the Cross de de describes it and carries it and caresses it in her arms. So you see here the two images are working in the same time. What he knows about the human um, behavior, the mother with the child, and what he knows about God's behavior toward the human being. And he finds that is almost exactly the same. And remember that in the, old, in the New Testament, St. Paul talks about the milk, the milk. Giving the milk means giving the first steps. But be careful when we talk about first steps, we, we talk about something already deep. We're not talking about normal Christianity. Normal Christianity, you can be very committed in a, in a parish, you can be uh, very uh, morally sound if you want, but you haven't yet experienced uh, that um, initial fire or initial um, encounter with Christ. You believe in God, you might be uh, fine uh, uh, going uh, at mass and, and, and fulfilling your duties, etc. But as Teresa of Avila puts it in the third mentions, love hasn't pushed the person out of these, this uh, almost tight, uh, tight frame, if you want. Okay, so this is even a previous, uh, um, a previous stage. So now we are here with a person who is compared to that stage, but advanced, but in the, his mind is still a beginner in the mind, a beginner in spiritual life, not, not, um, uh, not a beginner in Christianity, but in, a beginner in, in, in deeper Chris, Christian life, okay? So carries it, and like remember sometimes people say, okay, especially if you go to the, uh, uh, I don't know, charismatic renewal, and even if you go uh, sometimes uh, um, evangelical uh, people, they will talk about meeting Jesus, accepting Jesus as your own savior, and uh, then leaving your previous life and starting a new life. But you think that this is it. You reached the, the, the port, you reached uh, the, 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 the harbor. Not yet. Uh, we are still, we are starting a new journey. So we are in the eyes of the analysis of John of the Cross, we are total utter beginners, not in Christianity, in spiritual life, okay? So, sweet milk and soft, pleasant food and carries it and caresses it in her arms. This is what God does to us. But as the child grows bigger, the mother gradually ceases caressing it and hiding her tender love, hiding her tender love. In here, how he will apply it, he will say hiding a tender love toward the house of the sense, not toward the upper house. That's the, that's the thing here. That's the important uh, distinction I'm trying to make here. He's trying to make, but I'm trying to explain here, okay? Puts bitter, uh, alo aloe, uh, how do you pronounce this? Aloes, aloe, aloes, how do you pronounce this, please? Francesco. Aloysius. Say again. Aloysius. Aloysius. All yeah. this is Aloysius. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So puts bitter Aloysius. Thank you very much. Hang uh, on. And, and please do help me if I make any mistake because I don't want to be. Let's spell it again, Sean. It's, you can't see it. It's A L O E S. You can't see Aloes. it. Aloes. 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 Yeah. Yes. Which is like aloe vera, no? Yeah. It's a cactus. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's a bitter, it's a bitter thing. In all, in all times, in order to sort of, uh, I forgot the expression now, uh, to stop uh, um, breastfeeding, you would put uh, a bitter, something bitter or, or um, to, to the breast so the, the child will, will sort of say, no, 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 I don't want that. I forgot the word. How is it when you stop breastfeeding? How is it called? You? Hello. Hello. When you want to wean the baby. Wean, yeah, wean, wean, exactly. Wean, yeah. Thank you. So, <clears throat> so uh, how do you pronounce it again? Sorry, uh, Alois. Wean, wean. No, yeah, that's wean, but uh, Alois. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Apology for people watching. Uh, I'm a bit slow. Uh, puts bitter aloes, uh, aloes upon her sweet breast. Sets down the child sets down the child, which means you need to work more. 
you need to activate your um, um, theological virtues, faith, hope, and love. The grace of God works from inside now, not from outside. So we need more strength here. From her arms and makes it walk upon its feet, which means activate the, the uh, theological virtue, so that it may lose the habits of a child. So it may lose the habits of a child. So the initial part that uh, he will, uh, he's about to describe now below paragraph three, uh, will go, will have to go, you see. Um, <clears throat> so, so that it lose the habits of a child and betake itself to more important and substanti substantial occupations. Substantial occupations, theological life, using faith, hope, and love. The loving mother is like the grace of God, for as soon as the soul is re regenerated by the new warmth and fervor for the service of God, he's talking about second conversion. He's talking about second conversion. He treats it in the same way. The God treats it the same way as the mother. He makes it to find spiritual milk, sweet and delectable in all things of God, without any labor of its own. This is why the person finds spiritual exercise is very easy. And he will describe what happens a bit below. And also great pleasure in spiritual exercises. For here God is giving it to it the breast of his tender love, where? In the sensual part. So in order to heal the sensual part and in order to free and liberate the sensual part from its slavery to the passions and the senses, he has to give it something. Even so to a tender child, even as to a tender child. Therefore, so he is describing what happens in the first stage. So people who are still wondering, what is he talking about? What is that stage? What is that conversion? So re read here, please, and, and see. Therefore, such a soul finds it's the, it's the light, the, the milk, no? Spending long periods, perchance whole nights in prayer. Penances are its pleasures. Fasts, its joys. And its consolation are to make use of the sacraments and to occupy itself in divine things. So the person here is not aware, of course, that he or she is a beginner at all. They think that that's it. This is, this is life. This is spiritual life with God. No? And there is no tomorrow after that. It's, this is forever. It will stay like this. But the person is, is, doesn't know about spiritual life yet. Okay. So God is talking the language of the person in order to be able to push the person out from where he or she was. In the which things spiritual person, persons often find themselves, spiritually speaking, very weak and imperfect. They are not aware of this. He is aware of this. And we should be aware of it. For since they are moved to these things and to the spiritual exercises by the consolation and pleasure, you see, the person who will say, okay, I want to spend a whole night in, in, in adoration or penance, uh, have plenty of penances and fasts, uh, and fasts, etc., and finds consolation in it. You see, you find something to it. You can spend hours and hours and hours. So you feel that your, your world changed completely. You feel that the kingdom of God is, is, something, is something almost, I would say, palpable. The, 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 the change is experienced in the house of the saints. So, so, so the gospel is absolutely real to you, but you're not aware, you're not aware that this is just the first stages, the first steps. You see what I'm trying to say? Hmm? So here, pay attention please to the, the, how the, the sentence is, is structured. Hmm? For since they are moved to these things by the consolation and pleasure they find in them. So what is attracting me, and I'm not aware of it, is the pleasure I'm taking out of it. So, of course, the attachment to the sacraments is necessary. But is it theological? Is it pure or sensual? Spiritually sensual. Milk. Milk. 
you see here the problem. You see, it's, it's a serious problem. So we, we are on another level here where the person is, looks extremely fervent, looks extremely committed, but is not aware that he or she is moved by consolation. So what is moving me, what uh, the aim, the unconscious aim, conscious or unconscious, it could be very conscious, of course, is the pleasure, the spiritual pleasure. And if the spiritual pleasure is not there, well, the person then collapses. It's like, oh, what's happening? God is abandoning me. I did something wrong. You understand what's happening here? Hmm? You see? You see the, the, the point? Hmm? For since they are moved to these things and to these spiritual exercises by the consolation of pleasure that they find in them, and since, too, they have not been prepared for them by the practice of earnest striving in the virtues, they have many faults, imperfections with respect to these spiritual actions of theirs. For after all, any man's action correspond to the habit of perfection attained by him, which means what he said above, moved by the consolation, moved by what draws the person. So you see here, what is the reason? The person is extremely weak still, because in the virtues, think of essentially the theological virtues and how they drag all the other virtues behind them, uh, the virtues are extremely weak because I'm not moved by an act of faith. I am moved by what I feel, which is the, the milk, the consolation I draw from the exercise. You see, and God knows that there are entire uh, areas in the church, not, not, they're not everywhere, but there are, who, who are working and, and, and acting just based on that type of behavior. And they're not aware that this, this, is, this, is, uh, this should change. Uh, this is only a first phase. Uh, hence going in, in, in circles uh, around that, okay? Now, let me go back. So that's, that's just, um, just a, a parenthesis. So where from this is take, where this is taken from, taken from, it's Dark Knight chapter one, book, first book of the Dark Knight. And it's chapter one. And what I read is taken from uh, paragraph one, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay. So let us leave that out. We can come back to it if you want and go back to our uh, drawing if you don't mind. So where is the thing here? Sorry, I'm searching for the... So... So we're back here to our drawing. So I hope you, you, you get a better feeling now of what is happening. The human being is here. Say this is where I am I'm dwelling in myself. I could be outside of myself and I can move on. I remember uh, St. Teresa of Avila, what, what she says uh, in the, how she conceives the interior castle. She says that the human being is like a castle. So imagine that this is the outer part of the castle and then you go deeper and deeper and deeper until you are united with God here, the deepest uh, mansion, okay? So she says that the human being moves from one one um, uh, uh, stanza to one um, uh, one uh, dwelling place to to the other. You see, so now the human being is rather outside, is rather in the house of the sense, and as we said, enslaved to the passions and the sense, all the information that comes from outside and the sense. How can God free the human being? It's by acting at the level of the person and giving the milk to this area. So imagine now uh, I, I, uh, all, all this um, uh, area here um, completely moved. I'm just trying to find the, the uh, sorry, is it this one? No, it's not this one. Sorry, I'm trying to find my brush. Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so 
So imagine now God starts to uh, sort of uh, work in, in, in this area here. And talks the language of the person. But this doesn't mean yet that the person is necessarily activating the uh, spiritual, the, uh, the upper um, faculties, which are um, here, the um, mind, memory, and will, activating them, activating the virtues of faith, hope, and love. This dot there is God, obviously, in the center of our being. So this dot here is little dot, God at the center of our being. God is at the center of our being. So I need to move from being here to being here to being here to being here and finally to be united with God. So strangely, we can move. We can move. This is what the mystics are telling us. You move from one place to the other, one dwelling place to uh, the other, and therefore uh, you need to know where you are roughly, roughly what you are supposed to do in order to move on there. Now, the key point here is how will I be able to move on? God can give or not give any uh, milk in this area, but is this what matters? No, this is just to give a push if you want, but in the end of the day, what is important is to uh, activate the, the, act, uh, the act of um, uh, faith, the act of love, and the, the act of hope and the act of love. So it is important here to remember that what will make us move on is the activation of these three uh, virtues. So I'm not using the sensual perception of God, but I'm using the real grace of God that is given to me and I correspond to it. The grace of God is given to me and I react to it. And so the grace of God here is given to me and I need to produce an act of hope. The grace of God is given to me. I need to produce an act of love. This is why it's very important to learn to activate the three virtues. Very important. This is why he will dedicate book, book two and three only on that. Why? Because this will strengthen the upper part and will, will make us dwell and not anymore in, in, in this area here, if you want. We will move on from here to there, to there, and then be united with God, you see? So that's, that's very important. I need to move, and in order to move, I need to do things. You see what's happening here? So um, that, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the, the, the challenge. So the purification, as you know, has two stages always, has two parts. What I can do and what can God uh, can do. If God continues to give here his, uh, I would say, sensual grace, if you prefer, I will never progress because I'm leaning on what God gives me. I need to experience not this grace here, this sensual grace, if, if you want, but a deeper one. So let me draw something that is very important here. So imagine here, that uh, the, this orange, this orange presence of God in me is what replaces the green one here. The green one is the sensual, the milk, the sensual grace, the perceived grace, if you prefer, what gives consolation. But is this the core of the grace? Obviously the answer is no. This is just God trying to make me move from where I am to where he is. Now, what is the real grace? The real grace is given here. You see the orange, uh, the orange arrows, the three orange arrows here given to the will, to the mind, to the memory, and to the will. 
and they are waiting. They are knocking at the door of my mind, my, my memory and my will saying, okay, now please produce an act of faith, produce an act of hope, produce an act of love. And if you produce, what happens? If you produce, what happens? So let us see uh, if I produce. Of course, this is not in our text today, but you know, when he writes, he has all this in his mind. And when you read, if you don't have it in your mind, you really don't grasp what he's saying. So let us just do a, draw, a, a bigger drawing here of the upper part of the human being. So God is here. And he's giving his grace, we said in orange. He's giving his grace automatically, always, and waiting. I am at the door and I'm knocking, he says, okay? So uh, which color did I make? Yeah, it's red. So um, we have here, for instance, the uh, mind, the memory, and the will. So again, this is God in me, deep in me, not visible, not perceived, but real is, this is God in me. He communicates his grace to me. He gives me the grace, but he never forces it. This is why I need to learn to activate what John of the Cross calls the, the virtues, no? So here he reaches a point where he's waiting. He knocks at the door and says, okay, do you want Please do. You see, hence the necessity of a teaching, because if you don't have the teaching, you won't know that this is already happening in your life. At any stage, God is there knocking at the door of my uh, mind. Let me write them down because you might forget. So this is the mind. This is the memory. Faculties, the upper faculties. Uh, the rational faculties of the human being and the will. Here, St. John of the Cross is following St. Augustine. St. Augustine uses these three faculties. St. Um, Thomas Aquinas will use only mind and will. Just follow John of the Cross and, um, and um, see that how he presents, uh, presents it. But just I wanted to give you the background. No? It, you have different traditions. Um, three or two, uh, but these are the rational, the upper rational um, mind uh, uh, faculties, okay? Uh, the uh, soul, the rational, rational soul faculty, okay? So the more I activate uh, with my response to God, I activate here with an act of faith, my reply, the more there is transformation and growth and centering in God, centering in God, like rooting, centering in the sense of rooting myself in God. Instead of being rooted as we were here, rooted here in the lower part. So my center of gravity moves from this area up, 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 to have God himself as being my core, my center of gravity. You see what I'm trying to say? So my replies, the act of hope here, and then here the act of love, toward God himself. You see, this reply is strengthening uh, me and is fundamental. Otherwise, I will never grow. Otherwise, God will not move on to the next stage. Otherwise, the house of the, uh, the saints will never be purified or freed. What St. John of the Cross is singing is the fact that this part here of the human being is freed and went up in this place here, you see? So what happens is that the, um, these arrows here, 
of the passions and the sense are not anymore keeping the 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 human being um, enslaved to them and and here is another point god's work stops here this is why it will be called night so this work here of god will be taken away completely will stop you see will stop this is the change that he's talking about okay so let me just take back the okay that bit will not go back sorry okay so let us go back then to our text so please remember remember this drawing because this drawing helps understand when saint john of the cross will say that the house of the saints here is purified it means that god is stopped moving it i'm not moved anymore by the consolations i am rather moved by the activation of the upper part which is the theological acts of hope um, uh, faith hope and love so this house here is calm and quiet as if it's not there and the upper part has the upper hand uh, 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 upper hand to, towards the, the 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 lower part you see that's that's very important that's the shifting the change here the first change so the soul is singing the liberation the first liberation which is going from uh, here to there that's the first liberation liberation this house here is empty and quiet this is what john of the cross is singing i mean it's uh, the first interpretation of the being freed from the night of the sense from the house the the, the passions etc so the house of the sense is freed now the person now is free and is working elsewhere so when he will talk about the new love the new love you need to be careful here the new love a new love here will develop a new love here will develop which comes not from this green arrow but from the the communications here from god himself who is at the center of my being who is feeding my upper uh, faculties you see that's the new love the new passion that it, so there is a shift here from being fed initially by this green arrow the sensual the the the, the sensitive or the perceived aspect of the grace into something that is more proper of the grace itself so there is a shift a shift uh, and we, the mother is weaning the baby and the baby now is uh, invited to walk by himself and to walk by himself doesn't mean without the grace of god it means with the help of um, the um, the grace of god that is communicated here okay so let us come back to the text just um to have a final look and then we will stop because time is flying i am um, i'm afraid so let us see here the uh, portion of the screen <coughs> so you see uh, it says that in, it would need to experience another and greater enkindling by another and better love so what does it mean this better love it means the activation because of the activation of the virtues there is a love now that comes from god himself from within not from uh, this you remember the green arrow these perceived consolation these perceived consolations uh, etc okay now let us finish just by reading this because otherwise um, we won't be able to finish even the book one today now um and the nature and all the varieties here, here it's very interesting he wants he doesn't want to just to describe this new love 
the nature and all the varieties of these yearnings of love, which souls experience in the early stages of this road to union, and the diligent means and contrivances which they employ in order to leave their house, which is self-will during the night of mortification of the senses. So there is a, a little bit like a fight. If I do not activate the virtues, the, the, the theological virtues, I won't be able to switch. God will, will, I will still need that external support from God. So it is very important to take responsibility after a certain, after a while, to take responsibility and start to activate the, the theological virtues. He's not saying it here clearly, but I'm just giving you the, 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 what, what it means. Otherwise, if God stops any communication to the house of the sense, you don't have anything. You, you, you can't lean on anything. And this is very, God will never do that. Why? Because you can't lean on something, uh, neither the, the perceived grace nor the theological uh, proper uh, 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 activation of our being. So it, it cannot happen. Okay. So, uh, and how easy and even sweet and delectable these yearnings of for the spouse make all the trials and perils of this night to appear to them. This is not the place to describe, neither is such description possible. For it is better to know, which means to have the experience, and meditate upon these things than to write of them. And so we shall pass on to expound the remaining lines in the next chapter. Now, since I have explained previously chapter, this chapter, chapter 14 of book one, slightly in a different way. I'm very, I am aware of that. I said that in order to move on, I focused a lot on the communication of the green part, which is the milk, in order to free us. But will this be enough? No. You see, so it's the two, the two of them are needed. On one side, this is me trying to be fair with what I gave previously about chapter 14 and what I'm giving now. It seems like you have two different interpretations. Just bear with me. The first one, the first interpretation, and let me show you the uh, again the uh, the drawing. Just bear with me. We are about to finish. So the first, the first, the first um, explanation I gave. Um, in the, in when I started, uh, when when we were talking about chapter thirteen, I seem to say, to read this chapter fourteen, that new love, as being this green in intervention of God. Today, I am giving you a different interpretation. I am saying that this green is given, but still is not enough. It will help certainly, but still is not enough. Why? Because it needs it this the begin the, the the necess there is a necessity of the activation of these um, the, these theological virtues, because otherwise, if God stops here, He frees me here, but I have nothing to lean on there, nothing I will not move, which means I will I will not go there. That's not possible. You see, this is why I usually make this roaring in the um, in the whoever attended the solid foundation a course which is the entrance gate uh, in spiritual life in the school of mary i usually have this drawing no i say in the beginning of conversion no i say we we have the impression that the grace of god is going this way no we go for, through ups and downs of the perception from consolations to feeling of the absence of God uh, completely. I'm not using desolation here. I'm using a different terms because I don't want to mix it with what St. Ignatius says inside of the spiritual exercises. So we go here from perceiving the milk that God gives us to not having that milk, at, uh, perceiving that milk. See, I'm talking about that first phase, but moving on. As you can see here, it changes. It, it diminishes, but what diminishes? Is it 
the grace of God that diminishes? No, it is my leaning on the perception of the grace given in the lower part in the house of the saints. It's all about this area here and what is given here. So I feel it. I feel it. And then I don't feel it. Then I feel it. Then I don't feel it. Then I feel it and I don't feel it. I feel it and then I don't feel it. And, but you see here is it's diminishing. Why and how is it diminishing? I do explain that to the majority of people who, who, who um, uh, go to the school of Mary, they know, they know that perfectly. But let me just show you how the, the, the teaching is, is corresponds, no? Because if I activate here, we have, as, as we said, God in, in, the, in the center of our being here. Sorry. Um, God in the center of our being here. If we activate, when I don't feel here, when I don't have this green influence of God, I understand that it is the right time to produce an act of faith, produce an act of hope, produce an act of love. So the absence, the absence here is perceived as an invitation and, a, and a, a, an opportunity to produce, to activate the theological part, uh, the theological acts. Because the grace of God is, is given, the grace, the inner one, not the exterior one. The exterior one is just a bit of cuddling, a bit of uh, like two sticks when you, when God forbid you break, break your leg, uh, you, you, you have two sticks in order to walk, so you are leaning on the sticks. Or the mother is holding the hands of the arms of the baby when the baby is starting first time to walk, no? So you have that support, but that support is not meant to, to last forever, you see? But what is meant to last forever and the inner peace can be achieved when we don't have this consolation by producing acts of faith, uh, hope and love. So paradoxically, paradoxically, the absence of God, these variations here, the absence of God is an opportunity, is the right to, it, it is the right time, paradoxically. While the, the feeling of his presence is in fact uh, just a, an in-between situation where uh, we, we are able to bear the hardship of uh, not feeling a God, you see? So faith and love, you see what I'm trying to say? So this, why then it diminishes? It diminishes, it's the influence, it's the very, it's the uh, being moved here up and down by the variation of, of the house of sense. And the more the house of sense is uh, purified, quietened, the more the upper area of our being is activated, the less we are, um, um, under the variations up and down uh, of this uh, wild sea, uh, you see. So we are rather, the more we, we get here to, to the end of, of, of the, uh, um, this line here, it means we are stabilized in God himself. You see here uh, toward the end of the right of the drawing, we are stabil stabilized in God himself. We are closer to him. We are not submitted or subject to the variation, the outer variations. You see, whatever happens outside of us, whatever happens in the house of the sense, doesn't shake us, doesn't move us. You see, this is where we want to go. Okay, so um, I'm afraid I'll have to stop. Uh, I hope you will uh, find your way uh, there and uh, we will see maybe in a question and answer uh, session after this one, maybe we, you have some questions. Otherwise, uh, we can just finish the um, um, chapter, the last chapter and uh, chapter 15 and, and, and that's it. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for your patience. Thank you. Lord, for this teaching, and I, I hope you can measure uh, how important is this teaching for the church, especially for people who went through the conversion, who really 
um, experience that milk, the description given by St. John of the Cross in the text I just read to you from uh, Dark Knight Book One. And uh, so people can benefit from that and not just go in circles around uh, wanting the green intervention of God and not understanding that there is something um, vital, uh, absolutely uh, vital to, to learn uh, to do these theological acts. Um, it, is, it is a teaching that is fundamental, simple um, to a certain extent. It's simple, but uh, strangely uh, not known because uh, of a misinterpretation of the, 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 the teaching on uh, consolation and desolation as it is uh, offered by St. Ignatius, uh, taken out of its context and spread everywhere, universalized, which becomes, um, as you can see, uh, the opposite of the proper teaching the, here that is presented by St. John of the Cross. I hope you can see the huge difference between the wrong, um, the wrong doing we are, we are doing to St. Ignatius teaching in the um, 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 spiritual exercises, which is correct and absolutely correct inside of the spiritual uh, exercises as a criteria of discernment, but can never, can never in any way be applied uh, the way we are doing it which is not at all the way St. Ignatius meant it, first and foremost. It, it, it has a, a different meaning. And then uh, uh, you understand the, 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 the disaster it, it can generate, uh, which is like, we want the green intervention and we live out of the green intervention, convinced that this is the right thing. And in fact, we are just using the milk and we don't understand that this is the milk. So this is why the teaching of St. John of the Cross is absolutely important uh, for the church, especially for people who are spiritual, uh, if you want. So let us thank the Lord for this teaching, uh, for this prophet that God sent us 500 years ago, roughly, St. John of the Cross. Thank you, Lord, for this great prophet that you sent us, for the light he, that he is shedding. And uh, by the grace of God, by the intercession of Our Lady, Help us to understand what he says for our good in order to grow and draw closer to you. Amen.